back with another girl talk video. These are like some of my favorite videos ever. Some of it is a little awkward, a little cringy. What would you do if people at school called you toxic and bullied you? Important things to remember in a relationship. Ooh, this is a question I've never answered. What was the hardest part of having SEX for you? Katie, welcome back with another girl talk video, guys. These are like some of my favorite videos ever to talk to you guys about because I love giving younger girls advice or even guys advice, even though it is girl talk, but if you're a guy, hey, what's up? I love giving you guys advice just because there's things that like I wish I would have known when I was younger and it would have helped me out a lot. So if I could do that to other people, it would make me so happy. So I'm very excited to be doing this video and I always feel like they're very interesting because it's like things that no one really talks about and especially even on YouTube because it's like some of it is a little awkward, a little cringy but we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna dive into your guys' questions. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you guys do that. Also TikTok, I'll, I'll put them up right here. That's why I always ask you guys the questions when we do these girl talks. And with all that being said, let's jump right on into the first question. Question number one, what is the best thing to do in order to boost your confidence and self-confidence? So, okay, this is something that I think is so important is if you wake up every single day, you look in the mirror, you tell yourself three things you love about yourself. It doesn't even have to be physical appearance, but if that's like what you want more confidence with, start complimenting yourself, start talking to yourself how you would to your friend like if you would call your friend beautiful you would say oh I like your hair I like this like point out things that you like about yourself and tell yourself that every single day and that in my opinion will really help boost your self-confidence okay question number two okay let's get comfy for this one we're talking about period talk okay so it says how do you handle working out and how often do you work out when you're in your period? This is a really good question and honestly I'd say when I'm on my period I like to work out more because whenever I work out on my period it always helps with cramps and it's actually like a proven fact that like it's supposed to help like when you're like moving your blood's flowing it doesn't hurt as bad but don't get me wrong like if I'm working out and I start the workout the start of the workout is always so hard because I'm on my period and I want that excuse so bad just to be like okay I'm done like it hurts like this hurts too bad I'm not gonna work out because I'm on my period but Every single time I do that, my cramps, they hurt so bad. But when I continue to work out, they feel so much better. So I honestly like to work out more when I'm on my period just because it really helps um, with period cramps. That's just my personal advice. Um, you should try it. Let me know what you think. First period and most embarrassing period story. So I actually talked about this on JD Vlogs. So make sure you guys subscribe to that. I'm sure most of you guys are. But I talked about my first period story when I got it. I was 15 right before a basketball game. And I also talked about my most embarrassing period story. But that was when I was like an adult that was a couple years ago. But honestly, like, I feel like period stories like that are embarrassing, but at the same time, it's like life and that happens. And like, I feel like it's gonna happen to every girl. Like you're gonna have an embarrassing story, but it's like all who you surround yourself with and like who makes you feel embarrassed or who makes you feel like it's not that big of a deal. And I'd say one time, like I said, this is like a short story, like what I said in that video, basically like I sat down and like I bled like on the chair and then I had to like put my um, jacket down, like cover it up and then clean it. Like it's obviously like really gross, but like it's not because it's also like reality and that happens. It's just, it sounds gross to like say because most people don't talk about that. But like, I'm such like a type of person where I'm like, why are we hiding things that actually happen? Like it's not that big of a deal. It's only a big deal because people make it a big deal. Obviously it like sucks, but like, it happens so my thing is like just don't be too embarrassed and I'm also lucky because like when you're in high school it's definitely a lot harder because like I feel like boys and stuff are way more immature so if like someone saw that they'd like kind of like make fun of you or it seems like it would be so traumatizing but like what you got to remember is it's really not the end of the world okay this question says what would you do if people at school called you toxic and bullied you like they are with me okay first of all if someone's calling you toxic and they're the ones bullying you hello they're the toxic ones and the thing is if someone's like bullying you you really gotta like take a step back and think like whatever you're mom says normally they're right when they're like people are just making fun of you because they're jealous of you and like to be honest like the older I get the more true that is it's like people only hate on you if they're doing something that they're jealous of oh hi buddy oh hi okay this is so cute come here you just want to give mommy some love okay buddy okay we're talking about haters in school topper do you have any haters do you have any people that bully you no okay okay let mommy finish so yeah, the thing is, is I just feel like when people are hating on you, when they're picking on you, it's because maybe they're insecure about themselves or something and like putting other people like down makes them feel better about themselves. Like if I was a girl and I'm making fun of a girl's hair and I'm like, ew, your hair's so like ugly. It's just making me feel better about myself. So like, I would never do that. But what I'm saying is like people do do that. And I feel like that's why they do it is to make themselves feel better. So that's what you gotta remember. And just like, don't let people who are bullies, don't give them power because if they make fun of you and they see you cry, they see you like 
that it's affecting you, then they're like winning. They get that satisfaction. If you can be strong enough to just like say like, you really think I care what you are saying. Like, I don't care. Or just like kind of like literally act like it does not bother you at all. I'm telling you, it'll eat them alive. Like they'll stop. If you put an end to the bullying, it'll stop. Just be like, okay, you really think I care what you think. That's funny. Walk away. Literally see what happens. Anyway. Don't let people bully you, but don't bully them back. Just like make them feel like stupid for bullying you. Oh, this is a question I've never answered. This is a good one. What was the hardest part of having SEX for you? I feel like there really isn't like a hard part, but I did get a lot of questions and I'll just answer this. And also if you're young, like please click off this video. Like I feel like definitely wait till you're older, wait till it's right. Like don't rush into it. There's no rush at all. Like my advice would be like to honestly wait till you're married. And like, I didn't do that, but that would be my advice for someone because I just feel like it is so much more special. And I definitely think that that's like what you should do. But also I will say like as your first time, even if you're like married, it does kind of hurt your first time. Yeah, that's all I'm saying on that. Like I'm not gonna go into like detail, but it does. But it's not like the worst pain in the world. It's just not like, it's not enjoyable that much. This is a good question. It says, is it right to drink and cuss if you're a Christian? I would say it's not right to do that, but I would say that like, I drink, I swear, I'm Christian. I know God loves me. I know I'm not perfect. I try not to swear. I try not to drink all the time. I try not to sin. But the thing is, is like, you're asking like a question like, is it right to do this? No, it's not right. But like, is it right to gossip? Do people do it? Yes. Like no person is perfect. Whether you're Christian, whatever religion you are, no one's perfect. And that's the thing that's so cool about Christianity is like, God loves you no matter what. And he knows that you're a sinner he knows that you're imperfect like he knows that and he still loves you and that's why i think is so cool about the christian religion rather than different religions is like you don't have to try and be perfect you don't have to be perfect it's like you want to try to be perfect you want to do it because you love god and you know that god loves you no matter what no matter what you did in your past no matter what you did in your future you know that god still loves you and that to me is like the ultimate like faith religion like that is so cool that there's a god out there that loves every single one of you i definitely don't think it's right to do those things and I think it's good um, to not do those things because harm can come from drinking, harm can come from swearing or like hurting people's feelings or I just think like it's better to keep a cleaner lifestyle and like also not obsess over being perfect because when people do that then all they do is judge other people they're like they don't drink or like they're like oh they drink they swear they must not be Christian it's like okay well like you're literally judging someone which is also a sin so just try and be, just worry about yourself and try and be the best version of yourself possible. That's my advice. Ways to help bloating. I actually love this question. I've never talked about this, but I actually have had a couple problems with like, my stomach would always bloat when I'd eat and they're like ways to like help it. I think just drinking a lot of water for one helps. Making sure I eat the right foods for my body. Like some um, foods that just don't work well with me. Some foods like make me bloat. And I think when I notice that I'm bloating, I try and stay away from those foods and then honestly running if i run my bloating in my stomach it's like any air anything is trapped in there like it's like my bloating goes away so definitely like working out helps bloating a lot too important things to remember in a relationship there's this one saying that i really love it's like if he wanted to he would and that is so true it's like you can't just like wait on someone to be there for you or be like a good boyfriend if they're not it's because they don't care enough and they're not the right one it's not like oh you don't deserve to be treated right it's it's like you just haven't found the right person because every single person deserves to be treated good. You should be treating other people good. But like you also, as girls, I feel like you guys, I just see this a lot of time in like relationships is like girls settle for guys who like don't treat them as good because that's what they think they deserve. And that's so not true. I think every single girl deserves someone who like treats them amazing, which actually leads me to another question, which was, um, is it actually possible for someone to love me as much as Josh loves you? And I thought that was like really cute, but also like, I just want to say it is so possible Josh is not the only good guy out there. There's like millions of good guys just like Josh out there. Maybe like not the same person as Josh, but has like a big heart like Josh. And there's so many guys out there that are right for you. So it's like, don't waste your time. As soon as you know someone's not right for you, just end the relationship. There's no point in moving forward if you don't want to like marry the person or like be with the person long term. And like every single girl deserves someone that's going to treat them right. Because I will say it's actually kind of like funny because before I met Josh, I was like telling my one friend, I was like, I honestly just think I'm going to pay, have to settle for someone who's like, I don't think is attractive, but will treat me nice. Because I didn't think I was like, there's no good looking guys that are like, would treat you nice. And I'm like, holy crap, out of nowhere came Josh. And what's actually really cool is like, I prayed about it a lot and I have like my prayer journals of like, what I said and like I really think that helped and then also just like staying true to my word of I mean I was single for three years I didn't date anyone for three years because I 
didn't want to just date someone that wasn't perfect or not like perfect because obviously Josh isn't perfect but like I didn't want to date someone that wasn't like up to my standards or like what I thought I deserved and I think it's really good to remember that is that like keep your standards high and just wait like just be patient because you have the rest of your life with that person so there's no point in rushing into that so yes you 100% can find a guy that loves you as much as Josh loves me I believe that that is so true for each and every one of you what age did you start wearing makeup I started wearing makeup when I was in like seven grade or sixth or seventh grade but like light makeup like mascara and stuff and then I feel like I wore a little bit more in high school and then honestly as I get older I feel like I wear less makeup like more like everyday simple makeup just cuz like I just think natural beauty is like so it's my thing like I'm not saying like oh people who do makeup I think it's so cool when people do like a crazy makeup look I love it I used to do it all the time but I as I get older I'm like I definitely like like the natural like lip gloss like mascara highlighter look and like good eyebrows. But yeah, I started when I was in sixth grade. All right, how to tell if someone is being a fake friend? And I actually love this question is because it is so hard to tell if someone's a fake friend because sometimes it's like you just want that friendship to work out so bad that you ignore red flags. And that is my number one advice. If there's red flags from the beginning, listen to yourself and pay attention to those red flags. I've had so many friendships where I've had red flags and I'm just like, oh, I want this friendship to work so bad. But it's like, oh my gosh, I'm looking back. I'm like, what was I thinking? There's red flags. Pay attention to red flags. They're always there. And to me a fake friend is someone who doesn't care about you or they have a motive like what is their motive like why are they being friends with you are they being friends with you because you're popular are they being friends with you because your parents have a lot of money or you have a lot of money or are they friends with you because they like your boyfriend it's like what is their motive in being friends with you and looking at that do they genuinely care about you do they listen to you when you talk or are they like ignoring you do they not give a crap about you do they belittle you do they make you feel like less important when you talk to them or do you feel good when you talk to your friends do you feel like uplifted by them do you feel like like, I don't know, it's all in how they make you feel and it's like paying attention to that rather than just like ignoring that. And I feel like that's really important and like, do they talk bad about you? Do they talk good about you? It's like just paying attention to every little thing that a friend can do because you really have to be careful with fake friends. No matter how old you are in your life, it's like you'll come across people who you think are good, but they're not. And it's like, you just have to pay attention to that because if you do not, they'll just leave you being hurt by people. So you gotta watch out for fake friends, but at the same time, you gotta give people the benefit of the doubt and try and get to know them. Even if you see red flags, just pay attention attention and be a little more reserved with that um, relationship. What advice do you have for a girl getting comfortable with her body? I said this earlier a little bit, like telling yourself things you love about yourself. Just start talking to yourself like positively. That's my advice is like literally just start like hyping yourself up. Be your own hype woman. Um, what kind of period pads do you use? I don't. I use tampons. I actually showed you guys how to put in a tampon in the JD Vlogs video. I'll leave it linked down below. It's actually really funny. I made Josh use like his hand as like the down there area. Put it in. <laughs> Then you push it through and then pull like that. No! No! That's really funny. So you guys should go watch that video. Uh, birth control experiences. I actually don't take birth control. Never have. I don't think I ever will. Just because like I've heard a lot of people say it like messes up your hormones and stuff. What was it like when you got your first period? I was actually really excited. I was weird about it. It wasn't that bad. Like I didn't have period cramps up until like a couple months later. And I don't think that once I got my period, I had like a regular period. My husband is like crawling across. <laughs> He thought he would be in frame. He's like crawling across the ground. Anyway, um, I didn't have period cramps for the first couple months of having my period. And then I did. And actually the first time ever having my period cramps, I was in a volleyball tournament and I had to sit out a game because I was in the bathroom. I thought like I had to like poop. Like I never had this feeling in my life, like in my stomach. I was like, I'm sick. I'm sick. I don't know what's going on. I was like on the bathroom stall, like laying on the ground, crying my eyes out. Like it was the worst pain of my life. And those were like some gnarly period cramps. I had no idea it was my period because I've never had period cramps. I didn't have a regular period. And then I started my period and then I realized it was that but that was that was a gnarly story too that was crazy tips on staying faith guided i would say read the bible read the word of god it's like that every single time i read the bible i am like okay i feel so much better it's like feeding yourself good food rather than like toxic food of like social media is like toxic the bible is good it's like feed yourself that good information and that's always a really good way to stay faith-based what is it like being married and seeing each other not dressed okay i actually think this is a really funny question just because it's like once you're married and like you see each other like naked not dressed i think it's really cool because that's what i think is so cool about being married and is so cool about being intimate with someone is like you feel that next level of, of comfort with someone like i could do anything in front of josh and i feel like it's not embarrassing i just feel so comfortable around him the fact that like you feel no shame you feel no like guilt or anything it's like when you're like 
naked in front of that person when you're like with that person. And that's what I think is so special about marriage too. And that's why I feel like it is so important to even save yourself for marriage, even though like I'm, I didn't, but I also didn't like sleep around if I'm being honest. Like I was a pretty innocent, good girl. Like I just didn't wait till I was married. But the thing is, is to me, like my advice is like the more people you're intimate with and you take that next boundary, you like sleep with, you do these things with, it's like you're breaking a bond that you're gonna have with your husband one day. And I think it's really special. Like, just trust me, just trust me on this one thing. Don't sleep around, don't. Like just be innocent. Like every single guy is gonna find you a million times more attractive when they go to date you. They're not gonna wanna date the girl who's sleeping around with a whole bunch of people. And if you have no shame, like it's it's not, I'm not shaming you, I'm just saying. It is a lot better if you haven't to save yourself for the right person. And I just really wanna express that because like that is one thing I look back at my life and I'm like the only like little regrets I would have is like the other people before Josh. I don't want anyone else to like live with regret. And I don't live with regret, I'm just saying that would be like the only thing like I would change. But I'm also glad that I didn't have like a phase to where I like hooked up with a whole bunch of people because I know I would regret it now. Some people do and they don't regret it and that's their choice and that's like really good. But I just wanna express that to you guys because once you are intimate with someone, oh my gosh. What are you doing? I feel a little caught out here. What? <laughs> okay, Josh had a little bit of a past. I feel a little <laughs> Josh had a little bit of a past, but that's okay. We still love him. But don't you, wouldn't you say that like for- Hey, like guys, we leave the past in the past and they call it the present present because but Josh, it's like a gift. And we're here together and it's a <laughs> gift. And I have a question for you. I have a question for I you. I agree with what you said, yes. No, wait, come here, come here. What? I have a question for you. This is girl talk. Because you always told me, you were always like, the one thing that like, he's like, I really found it like so attractive that like he's always said this he's like you were so different and you always said this like why was I so different well Katie's so confident and strong and bold and strong-headed you know and didn't give herself to anybody and I respected that and I thought it was really good and and he always said it was like you were you were like the only girl that wasn't like throwing yourself at me you were the only girl that was like, True, trying know, to sleep with me trying to like hook up with me like to be okay, like <laughs> Not saying that like every girl was, <laughs> but like a lot of girls were. No, but anyways, um, yeah, I like the chase, you know? I like, yeah. I like the chase. And all I'm saying is guys like that. Like guys like when you're not just like, oh yeah, let me do it. Like, they, trust me, they're gonna act like they want you to sleep with them, but they're not gonna date you if you wanna do that as much. But everyone's different. Everyone has a different like story. So I'm no judge on anything, but that's just my personal opinion. If you can, if you want to, I would advise um, waiting for the right person. But anyway, that is going to wrap up our girl talk. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing girl talk. I think it's so fun. If you guys want more videos like this, comment down below girl talk questions you guys have and maybe I will put them in the next video. And then also, um, I wanted to know if you guys wanted me to do this video. I was gonna do a one year no shove update because I actually, like I know most of you guys know I had a no shove, but I wanted to know if you guys would wanna see that video, like questions, surgery, how much it costs, like all that stuff. I could do a sit down video and talk about that. So with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.